These are the knives we need to see more of. Let's talk about it. All right, guys, in this fastly evolving EDC knife world and spectrum where makers, especially American makers, are endlessly trying to pump out knives to satiate the rather vicious and voracious appetite of the consumers, especially American consumers. Today, I want to talk about knives that we need to see more of. Now, what I mean by this isn't so much that I would like to see more paramilitary twos, more hogue decas, or more griptilians, but I really wanted to talk about what makes these knives fundamentally amazing and why we need to see more knives in the, the world like this and kind of the aspects or the attributes that these knives possess that make them so desirable. And I think at the core, I know that there are many arguments out there and many valid arguments about, you know, knife companies being pushed to their max by, once again, a very hungry consumer market and a very low workforce and i do believe that truly the workers are few especially in america more than anywhere um, covid definitely taught us a lot of lessons and not a lot of good lessons about how a lot of people can make money by not really doing work and while that is truly a conversation for another video and maybe a video that should be talked about um, though there are many good youtubers that have already um, touched on those topics i wanted to make a video truly talking about these blades because they're very simple knives i mean there's a reason why the paramilitary 2 is so well loved the griptilian is so well loved and i believe why the deca should be more well loved and that is because they are very simple knives that know what they are and prioritize functionality and usability above everything else. And undoubtedly, I do have a lot of nicer knives, things like the Nkosi, that is sheer class in my opinion. But at the same time too, I think where consumers, or sorry, where manufacturers such as Benchmade, Spyderco, Hogue, and many others, Kershaw, ZT, should really be prioritizing their blade designs and their overall trajectory. It really should be kind of going back to the basics, going back to the the roots of what made them successful in the first place. I think Benchmade is best to learn this lesson because they are the most that have really branched off. I think Hogue honestly is doing pretty well for themselves, but especially companies like Benchmade and Spider Co. would really do well to learn and kind of drive back to simplistic, highly useful blade designs such as things like the Griptilian. This is a perennial favorite, whether it's the uh, Hogue Ritter, sorry, whether it's the Ritter RSK version of the Griptilian, or whether it's something more like this 550 that draws a lot of inspiration from Spider Co., especially with the opening hole. You know, these blades ultimately speak to a very core user base. And I think that that is the biggest thing that is lost with so many knife companies. They are trying to push so hard to give us new designs instead of really just making strictly usable blades they kind of veer off into you know like tools and things that can be useful potentially and things that are almost more artistic than actually usable and while there certainly can be good blends and fusions of this you'll notice that unfortunately a lot of times when it comes down to it these blades just end up being too gaudy or too weird too expensive in many other things. But on top of being a very functional tool, I think the other push really should be towards trying to see what you can, or trying to see what these manufacturers can do from their end to use very simplistic materials. Now, blade material is another thing. And while I'm not necessarily saying that they should push for magna cut like this, you know, going to things like polymer handles like this can honestly really bring down the price point of a blade or the cost uh, of a blade while 
still keeping much of the functionality. And I think one of the biggest things is like handles where knives or knife manufacturers highly prioritize things like titanium handles or carbon fiber handles in the false illusion that that will make a blade somehow better. And on the surface, it may make a blade lighter. And I say may because polymer handles are super lightweight anyways. But at the same time too, Few things have as little impact on the blade than changing the handle material. Now I will say the handle does have a good amount of impact from the ergonomic standpoint, but once again, if you simply just change out your handle material or go into a knife with a carbon fiber, titanium, or some type of other you know, higher end material for a handle, you're really not doing much to impact the actual performance of that blade, but you are increasing the price a lot. So once again, you'll see with a lot of knives that were originally kind of back in the day, things like this Benchmade Griptilian, you know, designed for just very, you know, general purpose use and appealing to a broad consumer base. They use things like Grivery or FRN or polymers because they were handles that once again were light enough, strong enough rigid enough and still got the job done and then focused a lot more of their time on the blade design and the blade material. Now even this 154cm is kind of dated but still 154cm isn't half bad. It also wouldn't in my complete honest opinion it, it might shock a lot of consumers but truly I think it would surprise a lot of people for someone like Benchmade, like Hogue, like Spyderco to go back to these materials like 154 cm i think personally that we may very well see this in the future where there is kind of a push back to more budget steels because one this does keep the price of knives lower and two once again i will continue to say that i don't personally believe that things like toughness, edge retention, and um, overall durability will be experienced by most consumers to the highest extent that these blades are actually possible of achieving. Like Rex 45 is an amazing steel, but personally, I don't think most people will ever see the full benefits of Rex as opposed to something like 154 CM. You know, it's, it's going to be like in comparison, the end user probably wouldn't notice too much of a difference between these two steels or even Magna Cut for that instance. And that's partly what I said when I talked about Magna Cut is not the future. Uh, is because once again, most average users are not going to be honestly pushing their knives to the limits of corrosion, toughness, edge durability. And once again, most people won't be, you know, owning a wicked edge to lean that edge out to like a 15 degree per side angle, you know, like most people do not even possess the capabilities to do that. Now, once again, I just so happen to be one of those people that does have a wicked edge. I could do it if I wanted to on any of my blades, but I'm really not that inspired to. And once again, I don't think most consumers will even have the ability to do that. So, you know, when it comes to like pushing steel, pushing handle material, pushing all of these parts to a knife to the highest degree, unless you can offer it truthfully in a good value, I don't really think most knife makers are better off trying to chase the best steels, handles, or um, really any other material component to their blade. But going back to a really classic, really timeless, highly utilitarian blade, something like this 550 would be really, really recommended. And honestly, I would love to see more knives like these going forward. And personally, I think some not knife makers like Spyderco are more well aware of this than you might think because that's why they released the Spyderco Military 2. It is extremely similar to this. Essentially, it's just a sized up version of the Paramilitary 2 and I think it will sell very well because once again, it's a highly utilitarian blade, very simple, very functional, and even their introductory to it or to the Paramilitary 2 is going to be in CPM S30V, a steel that they can manufacture very quickly, very easily, and very cheaply, within reason. Obviously, the Military 2 is not going to be super cheap, but once again, I think it will do well for those reasons specifically. So anyways, guys, those are kind of my two cents to what I would love to see more 
from knife manufacturers. And I think that within reason, I can't necessarily cross, you know, into saying that their manufacturing would be better or easier or cheaper to deliver products like these. But I do truly believe that it would be easier for companies like Benchmade, Spyderco, Hogue, Kershaw, ZT, any of them, you name it, to deliver American-made products like these. And I would love to see more American-made knives that embody the design manufacturing premises of these knives. Anyways, guys, that's all for now. God bless, and I'm out.